these sometimes we get carried away with how big these decisions are, but it's not a small decision to give Panarin an A last night. Just what does that mean, and what was the thought behind it? Well, he's been uh, the way he carries himself, the way he plays, the way he prepares. Uh, without saying one word, uh, he has shown true leadership. Okay. Without saying one word. Is he starting to say more, or you mean just through his example of effort? And no, he practice? doesn't need to say a word. He, the way he does things and uh, the way he plays, the, the way he uh, works off ice, he doesn't need to say a word. Sometimes leadership is very confusing when it comes to words. And uh, yeah, so I'd rather have a guy say nothing and just do it the right way. Has he mentored uh, Luke a little bit in terms of? You'll have to ask Luke that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know he's had some conversations, but to answer the question, you should ask Luke. Did you get any uh, feeling at all last against Edmonton when Connor McDavid's out there with Panarin that it's an opportunity for him to show how good of a player he is too? You know, that one-on-one -on -one competition within the game? I think Panarin uh, doesn't need any any type of motivation. I think he tries to be the best player every night. Uh, I think he enjoys the game that much. Uh, I, I think he puts the time in that much uh, to be the best player every night. I, I, don't, I don't think there's, there, there's any type of uh, exterior, if that's the proper word, motivation for him. I think he's just built that way. He was, uh, he became pretty good friends with Kane in Chicago. They were good friends off the ice and on the ice and that kind of thing. So I know he misses playing him with him that way. But in a way, do you think it was, it's, it's been enjoyable to, to see what he's been able to do without having a guy like Patrick Kane on his line? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, again, when we, when we talked about him when we first got him, I wasn't sure what he was. Um, uh, Patrick Kane is, is just a dynamic player, uh, great guy, all that stuff. And you're not sure which ones work with what, you know, as far as how, how it all worked. I didn't coach that team and certainly wasn't up close and personal. So uh, I, I did wonder about what would be the good match for him uh, uh, to get the most out of him. Uh, I didn't realize how much of a complete player he was. And it, took, it, it didn't take me long to figure out it's really uh, not the people that play with him. He makes the other people better. And uh, that's the type of player he is. I, I do think he likes to pass more than shoot. I think he, I think he enjoys making plays like that uh, instead of trying to score goals, although he loves scoring goals. Um, yeah, he, he, he has, uh, he's been impressive from day one for me. Uh, and how he's done things. He makes, he's not only one of the top players in this league, he makes other people better. Yeah, he kind of got locked into that one-timer last year. I mean, we, we were writing stories about it and everything about, yeah. is he taking it too much? This year, it's balanced. It's oh, like yeah, he doesn't yeah. Just, you know. He's just a hell of a player. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, he's a hell of a player. There's not many better ones in the league. I heard a couple of people reference, this is going back a little bit, but your, your previous West Coast trip, the California trip, how important that San Jose win mm -hmm. was for you. Did that almost feel like last, like the, the same this season as the Chicago win really early last season when you were starting to... Oh, man, I don't remember that. Well, you were 0-2, you were <laughs> taking on water, and then you beat Chicago at home, and you took off. Yeah, I still don't okay, remember. Okay, just stick to yeah. this year then. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we'll just stick to this <laughs> year, yes. <laughs> how much, how important was that for you? To, just the yeah. confidence you, you go all for California. Yeah. Where we are as a team at that point in time, you wonder where... and. And we were talking about this, all of us, each and every day, the confidence of the team, yeah. trying to get some sort of strut in our game. You go all for California. What happens? What happens to you? Do you uh, yeah, we were taking on water. Do you, do you sink even more? And is it, it to the point where you just can't get out of there? Uh, you know, Bob was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, big part of that win there, but it was a win. Uh, and then it just kind of slowly grew. I. I I do, I, I think we had a very important meeting when uh, Brad Larson showed a video, uh, an offensive video of us, uh, some offensive zone stuff, some concepts as far as offensive zone, about getting to the net, uh, about people being there. I think that helped us, and then we started scoring goals, uh, a team desperately needing to score goals. Uh, slowly it started coming, and then everybody just started feeling better. I think our general manager does 
just one hell of a job uh, at the deadline where everybody was saying that he didn't do enough and uh, we didn't, I don't want to, I don't want to shit on Motter or any of those guys that left, but where were they in an organization? We really didn't lose any of our top assets and I think we made our team better, obviously, the way these three guys have come in and played. So yeah, so it, it just kind of built, but that San Jose game was very important, us stealing a game out of there, just, just to feel halfway decent about ourselves yeah. before we went home. John, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, like, coach to coach, when you see what's happening in Calgary, and you've been in that probably position before mm -hmm. when it feels like nothing you do mm -hmm. is working. Mm -hmm. How Do you feel for a guy like Glenn? I know you guys have had a, have a, had a good relationship oh, yeah. In, yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah, he's a terrific coach. And I, I watch it very closely. Not, not I don't know what's going on above him, the pressure that he's receiving. The uh, I, I don't stay in touch with how the people are treating him. I know it's a really hard place to play when there's been some struggles and there's been some expectations here. Um, don't, don't, don't give up on him. He, he's too good a coach to, uh, he, he gets it. Uh, I just had a short conversation with him here this morning. I'll, I'll, I think it, I'll see him here in a few more minutes. Uh, I, I think he understands the way out. I think he, I think he can understand how to handle some of this. Uh, the, the pressures of Canada, Calgary, expectations, multiple owners, everything with that comes with it. Uh, yeah, I, I he, he's go, he's going to be fine. And, and I and I in in a number of conversations I've had over the summer uh, with Brad and just getting to know him a little bit, you've got some good people running your hockey team. Um, I don't I don't want to step out of bounds. In fact, I won't step out of bounds. I'll, I'll leave oh, it at that. No, no, I, 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 I just, Glenn Gullitson is one hell of a coach. Um, Brad, Brad, and I don't know him as well as Glenn, but in the conversations we've had in talking about Glenn before he was hired and, and, and just from the, you're in good hands. If patience is a very important thing when you're trying to build a hockey club. And uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I can see it. I can see it on him this morning. It wears on him. It's wearing on Gully. It, it, it's been it's been hard because he cares, and uh, yeah. He but you got the right man there. You got the right man there. There's no question. And unfortunately, sorry. In up, up, in, the, in in this role, there's not a lot of patience on like l levels yeah. above you, and that's it's part of the that's game. Part of the game. Yeah, it's part of the game, and Gully totally understands that. But uh, I, yeah, I. I I, I just think he is a good hockey man and understands how to find the way out to get, get the team back where, uh, where he wants it to be. But also, you got to remember, there is a process. I know everybody wants to win right now, and, and you have a, a good year last year, and, and, and then there's expectations. Uh, I, I think the coach knows best really where exactly the team is and what the process needs to go through. Sometimes the people above them, they want it there. They want it there because they just want it there. They forget about the process. I think the coach and general manager, the guys that really have their thumb on it and understanding where the team is and where it needs to go through in those steps. And uh, I think you get two really good men there that understand that. Uh, I want to ask you about Doobie, what your thoughts of him were uh, working with, with Sonny and, and Bjorki, just what? I've seen one game. I haven't even looked at the video. I'm still looking at the video, so I really have no thoughts. Did you go into it thinking, you know, that you want to give him an extended opportunity to prove himself? Who? Uh, Doobie. Like, uh, he played 13 minutes, 22 yeah. shifts. I mean, it was a yeah. normal night, basically. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm not mad at Doobie. Right. You know, I'm, 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 Portsy asked me, hey, did you send him? I didn't send, I'm not trying to send a message. I'm trying to play the guys that I think gives us the best chance every night. And Doobie fell out of graces there in that, in that role. But uh, Doobie's a good pro. Doobie, Doobie can be a, a really big asset for this team as we go through the next few games here. Uh, if he gets his focus, there's been a lot of things going on around him, injuries and stuff like that. But uh, uh, it's his turn up with the injuries. It's his turn up again. It's a great opportunity. And again, I, I, I don't want to make a judgment because I like watching the video uh, first. And uh, 
if he brings that type of attitude that he can bring, he'll help us. So you mentioned this with uh, Vanek about him wanting to pass first, always pass first. Yes. Panarin has had that as well. Yes. This every team uh, that I've ever covered, every hockey team ever. As those guys. Yes. What is the psychological affliction that makes guys no want idea. to always pass? I have no, if I had that idea, I wouldn't have to go through the shit I go through watching him <laughs> pass the puck every time he should be shooting. It's every team ever, right? Yes. It, it's just, it is part of, I don't know what it is yeah. in their world, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thomas and I had, have had three or four conversations before last night's game. He was going to shoot the puck. He's going to shoot the puck. He's gonna sh yes, I'm going to shoot the puck. First play, he make two on one with Jonesy. He doesn't shoot the puck, and then it blows up on him. He almost throws it out of the end zone when he's trying to pass to Jonesy. Right. I think that I didn't say one word to him because right. I saw what he looked like when he came to the bench, and I knew what he was thinking. Yeah, because it was an awful pass. If you want to pass, at least make a good pass. It was an awful pass, and right then I think he said, "I'm going to shoot everything I get tonight," and he scores three goals. I, 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 a couple of them are fortunate. Uh, the, the, the biggest goal he scores, I think, that gives us that pad out in the high slot there. I don't think yeah. it's a great goal, but he shot the puck. Yeah. And, and, yeah, so don't even ask me what they think. Because half the time, well, 90% of the time, I don't know what players are thinking yeah. and how they play, but they play the game, so we try to coach them. It's the search for the perfect goal, easy goal. Yeah, tap yeah, in, whatever. yeah. They, they, and listen, they... <laughs> They see the game totally different right. than you and I do. You and I are slugs w w as far as watching the game and sure. understanding what they see. Right. That's why they are, that's why, quote unquote, from a, a very respected coach I know, telling me Thomas Vanek is, is one of the best players from the blue line in. I said that to you last you night. Do. Yeah, and I can see that quality in him. So I'm not getting in his way. I have to turn away, that's all. I just have to turn away sometimes and allow him to work through it himself because yeah. he is a seasoned veteran. He knows what I want I, 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 in, in conversations, but when the game comes, I, I just turn away sometimes and, and, and just let him figure it out. And he yeah. did last night and proved to be a really big part of our win. Because you're on the bench. You're not seeing what he's seeing. No, I'm not. Seeing. No, but when he makes the play, I just, I'm a, I, like I told Shaz, I said, Shaz, I'm going to spend the whole game just looking at you, not even watching the play on the ice <laughs> because I don't get it sometimes. But they end up figuring it out. Okay? Yeah. They, they, that's, why, that's why he has the numbers he has, and, uh, and I'm sure that's why he's gone from team to team, too, along the way here, too, because he's driven people crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I, I, I respect him. I, I, I think he has given us a huge jolt offensively. Yeah. And, and last night, the second half of that game, I watched him work on the other side of the puck, too. He did some really good things on the other side of the puck, too. That's probably the bigger reason he's moved around. Than not yeah, sure. yeah, and again, I, I'm, I'm trying to experience it myself. Yeah. I'm not going to listen. Just like I tell you guys, don't listen to what people say about me and yeah. to you, or any player, any, any person wants the, you to experience the person and make your own judgment. I'm making my own judgment. I don't see some of the things that people are afraid of with this guy yeah. uh, as far as attitude. And, and, and uh, he is receptive. He is intelligent. He drives me nuts sometimes, <laughs> but he is a really yeah. good player. And it's really helped us try to find our way here. Did St. Louis, Le Cavalier, those guys pass too much? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Richards. Yeah. All yeah. Those guys. And look at them. <laughs> yeah. so they're they're great players. Who the hell are we that's, to to that's make judgments point. on them? Right. So I have to sometimes yeah. because I just don't know what to do with myself when I see some of the things. So I do yeah. make some judgments, but I I'm I'm leaving him alone because I think he's smart enough to figure it out. I coach him a little bit, but during the game, I know he's going to figure it out, and I experienced that last night. 